This is Hassan Akram, your friend and the host of the Autonomous Vehicle Safety and Security Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about the advancements in the automotive security domain. We have had a video on how to hack a car. Now it's time to talk about what are the technologies out there that you can use to protect your vehicle, to make your vehicle secure. So uh, I'm gonna start with the four advancements that I have seen in the last few decades that has been advanced and we have them at our disposal, these technologies to secure our vehicle. The first one is firewall. The concept of firewall comes from the traditional IT domain. To protect your network, you put a firewall. So in automotive, you can put a firewall in order to secure the gateways of the vehicle network. Number two is cryptography. In the past few decades, we have seen a hardware security module getting more powerful and cheaper and more accessible for the vehicle users. And hence, cryptographic services are extremely um, inexpensive in a sense that does not require as much as, as much as execution time as a software crypto would. So Altozar has defined the crypto service manager, de defined the interfaces, standardized interfaces, and that can also talk to your hardware security module. And Adaptive Altozar uh, takes it to another level. We're gonna have another episode on Adaptive Altozar security, so stay with us. Number three is intrusion detection. So intrusion detection is something that tells you if you, your, your system is behaving normally or not. Um, it, it, the intrusion detection system detects anomaly, it raises a flag. So this one is a big advancement. We have seen big acquisitions like companies like Argos uh, bought by, by Continental for half a billion dollars. So this one was a, was a big advancement. Finally, there has been advancement in standardization. ISO 21434 is about to be released early next year. So that will give us a standardized way to engineer security for automotive. Now, let's have a look where these technologies can be used and where are the most vulnerable spots in our car today. In today's automotive, there are several places we have seen attacks, we have seen vulnerabilities. First of all, OBD2 port. For example, the Audi TT airbag disablement was ha happened when they were um, updating the, the, the firmware in the garage using the OBD2 port. So the OBD2 port is still a very, very vulnerable spot where you can inject vulnerability in your vehicle. Second is TCU, telematic control unit. This is where we have seen the Chrysler hack. So, your GPS system or your car has to be talking, communicating with the external world. And that is controlled by the TCU. This is, this is where, uh, where uh, if you don't have physical access, the attacker will try to gain access of the car remotely. So this is where we have to put a lot of security mechanism. Another spot where we have seen attacks is your infotainment system. In your infotainment system, you put, either a USB stick or you probably download an image or a, a music, uh, music data and that might have embedded vulnerability in it. Finally, over the air update, which is necessary today in order to keep uh, the vehicle, vehicle updated, the vehicle software updated, can be another place of attack where, where the attacker can inject uh, malicious code. Now, having said that, I must, uh, I must include one point. The vehicle connected car had uh, gone through th several generations. In my opinion, three generations. The first generation is your car was pretty much offline, but you could put your mobile phone with a jack into your car uh, in order to listen to music or your GPS. That was the first era. That was the first uh, connected car era. So from then on, it was theoretically possible to, to attack through uh, remotely. Second was when your car had an IP address in it. Your car had a GPS uh, a receiver uh, and your car was 
pretty much connected to the back end. And the third is, so, so to say, the vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to X communication where your car will be communicating with pretty much everything around it. So now that we have seen the technologies that we have at our disposals, we have also seen the vulnerable spots. Let's talk about how to apply these technologies in these vulnerable spots. Oftentimes, in big corporations, tier ones and OEMs, we use a method called the stride method that comes from Microsoft actually. The stride method is where your threats are. This is a threat modeling, um, threat modeling method. So you have spoofing, tempering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of services, elevation of privileges. These are the attacks. These are the kind of attacks that you have in mind and you try to try to secure your system from these attacks. So spoofing, tempering, and repudiation, these three things can be covered by your cryptography. HSM, when you, when you have the crypto service manager, you make sure that it is end-to-end -end protected with crypto, not with CRC. CRC is not necessarily cryptography. It doesn't mean it's, it's secured. Uh, CRC is merely an error correction uh, mechanism. It's not crypto. Information disclosure can also be protected by cryptography. Denial of services, you need your intrusion detection. Here, I wanna mention a very interesting point. What happens when your back end is compromised? How do you even understand it and what do you do? So that's why intrusion detection is a very important aspect. We first have to know whether my system has been compromised or not, my backend has been compromised or not. This is the first step you take. And then based on that, you will do your, either open your car or, or uh, take commands from the backend and that kind of thing. So intrusion detection system will protect the denial of services. And finally, escalation of privileges or elevation of privileges. Why do we need that in, uh, in our cars, in automotive? This is a very important one. Because if you even look at safety, you will see that uh, lower AZ level components cannot have access to, for example, memory units or any other places w for the higher uh, AZ components. So that is escalation privilege. That matters in security as well. In security, ISO 21434 will define the CAL level, the, the cybersecurity assurance levels and lower cybersecurity assurance level should not interfere with the higher security assurance level components. So that's why this one matters. How do you how to ensure that? You can ensure that using a firewall or even crypto. So we're going to discuss all these things in our coming meetup that's happening on the 31st of July here in Munich. If you're in the Munich area, I request you to join, sign up, you'll find the link below. And if you're not in Munich, there's nothing to worry about. We're gonna put a link of our live YouTube streaming. You can join online, you can ask questions online. So whether you're in Munich or not in Munich, I encourage you to join. The links will be found in the, in the description of this video. And uh, our last meetup was extremely successful. If you wanna look at the highlights or the, the entire videos that we streamed, um, you will also find the link either up right corner of this video or down in the, in, in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you have liked this video, if you have found this, uh, found, found value in this, this inform information that we have given today, please uh, share this video. Please smash the like button if you've liked it. And please, please subscribe to our channel. This was Hassan Akram and we'll see you in the next episode. In this podcast show, we bring in the industry leaders and experts in the automotive domain to share their experiences along their journey. The mission of our podcast is to start a dialogue that will allow us to understand the development of automotive industry and where the automotive industry is going. You can ask questions to our guests directly. Just send us an email to podcast at matrix.de. We'll schedule a call with you during the recording and you'll be part of our show. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. 
please share this video to help others get enlightened as well and that would mean a great deal to us. See you in the next episode.